Hi, folks. It's me, Dr. Thompson. Come to read you some more stuff. Here, down a bit. Oh, I'll put on my headphones and my head uh, lamp. Yes, there you go. Yeah, this is out of the Hell's Angels book, not at the end of it. And actually, I wrote this thing when I, I, I used to do this. Just to cool out, uh, well, every night, you know, somewhere. And the park was always a good place to run. Uh, an evil place to run with wet roads and uh, those curves. <coughs> and I did have the fastest bike ever tested by Hot Rod Magazine. The uh, BSA Lightning 650. Okay, this is the first draft. I can still barely see when I came back to the apartment uh, overlooking Gizar Stadium and the corner of Hayton Stanion Park. My eyes were still uh, kind of windburned. And uh, I just sat down and uh, I wrote this. Well, you photographed. Yeah, you can't use audio tape at that speed. Okay. Little kicker. It's little midnight on the coast highway. All my life, my heart is soaked in a thing I cannot name. Remembered line from a long forgotten poem. I remember who wrote that. I mean, T.S. Eliot. Hard link layer. Yeah, this is the end of the uh, Hell's Angels. Saga. Months later, when I rarely saw the angels, I still had the legacy of the big machine. 400 pounds of chrome and deep red noise to take it on the coast highway and cut loose at 3 in the morning when all the cops were lurking over in 101. My first crash had wrecked the bike completely and it took several months to have it rebuilt. After that, I decided to ride it differently. I would stop pushing my luck on curves, always wear a helmet, and try to keep within range of the nearest speed limit. My insurance had already been canceled, and my driver's license was hanging by a thread. So it was always at night, like a werewolf, that I would take the thing out for an honest run down the coast. I would start in Golden Gate Park, thinking only to run a few long curves to clear my head. But in a matter of minutes, I'd be out at the beach with the sound of the engine in my ears, the surf booming up on the seawall, and a fine empty road stretching all the way down to Santa Cruz. Not even a gas station in the whole 70 miles. The only public way along the way is an all lit diner down around Rockaway Beach. There was no helmet on those nights, no speed limit, and no cooling it down on the curves. The momentary freedom of the park was like the one unlucky drink that shoves a wavering alcoholic off the wagon. I would come out of the park near the soccer field and pause for a moment at the stop sign, wondering if I knew anyone parked out there on the midnight humping strip. Then in the first gear, forgetting the cars and letting the beast wind up. Thirty-five. 45, and then in a second, and wailing through the light at Lincoln Way. Not worried about green or red signals, but only some other werewolf loony who might be pulling out too slowly to start his own run. Not many of these, and with three lanes on a wide curve, a bike coming hard has plenty of room to get around almost anything. Then into third, the boomer gear, pushing 75 in the beginning of a wind stream in the ears, a pressure on the eyeballs like diving into water off a high board. Bent forward, far back on the seat, and a rigid grip on the handlebars as the bike starts jumping and wavering in the wind. Tail lights far up ahead jumping closer, faster, and suddenly zap, going right past and leaning down for a curve near the zoo, where the road swings out to sea. The dunes are flatter here, and on windy days, sand blows across the highway, piling up in thick drifts as deadly as any oil slick. Instant loss of control, a crashing fork wheeling slide, and maybe one of those two-inch notices in the paper the next day. An unidentified motorcyclist was killed last night when he failed to negotiate a turn on Highway 1. Unquote, end. Indeed, but no sand this time. So the lever goes up into fourth. And now there's no sound except wind. Screw it all the way over. Reach through the handlebars to raise the headlight beam. The needle leans down on a hundred. And wind burned eyeballs, trained to see down the center line, trying to provide a margin for the reflexes. But with the throttle screwed on, there's only the barest margin and no room at all for mistakes. It has to be done right, and that's when the strange music starts. 
When you stretch your luck so far that fear becomes exhilaration and vibrates along your arms. You can barely see it a hundred. The tears flow back so fast that they vaporize before they get to your ears. The only sounds are wind and a dull roar floating back from the mufflers. You watch the white line and try to lean with it, howling through a turn to the right, then to the left, and down the long hill to Pacifico. Letting off now, watching for cops, but only until the next dark stretch and another few seconds on the edge. The edge. There is no honest way to explain it, because the only people who really know where it is are the ones who have gone over. The others, the living, are those who push their control as far as they thought they could handle it, and then fall back, or slow it down, or did whatever they had to when it came time to choose between now and later. But the edge is still up there, or maybe it's in. The association of motorcycles with LSD is no accident of publicity. They are both a means to an end, to the place of definitions. San Francisco, 1965. Let you write words, shot through and through. Hunger, death, I got a shot. Eat the words. 